Last night, my four-year-old son came to me crying, sobbing. We were at a fireworks show, and they launched off some of those parachuter guys. All of the kids went crazy, racing for the little parachute. And of course, the big, fast, strong kids are the ones that got it. Kids that were like 13 or 14. And my four-year-old son didn't have a chance. It reminded me of another incident with my other son, uh, who entered into a little race that they had at the skating ring. Everybody lined up, and they were all going to skate and see who could get around the whole ring the fastest. And some of these kids skated much faster than I could sprint as a full adult, and they were teenagers. And then there was my son, who was like six. And my son was crying and sad at the end of it because he didn't win. The sadness comes from unmet expectations. My son, or sons in both instances, expected something to happen. They were attached to the idea of something happened. They wanted something to happen, and they thought that it would. Then reality played out, and not in the favor of their expectations. Having these unmet expectations created anger, sorrow, frustration, suffering. If you really carefully evaluate your life, you'll discover whether you're 4 or 14, 40 or 104, that most of your suffering is based on your expectations and how they come short to reality. So what are you going to do about it? You've got two options. You can change your expectations or you can change reality. Or I guess the third option is you can just continue to suffer. Of those options, um, continuing to suffer is probably the easiest and it's probably why most people do that. But if you'd like to stop suffering, then I recommend the two options that I gave. Either change reality or change your expectations. Let's say that you wanted to be rich and your definition of rich was making a million dollars a year. Well, change reality. Go out and figure out some way to earn a million dollars a year so that you meet your expectations. Maybe then you won't be frustrated anymore. Or you can change your expectations. You could say, I don't need to have a million dollars in order to be happy. I can be happy with any income that I have, as long as that I have enough to eat and roof over my head, or something in between the two. That's usually easier than changing reality in most situations. Part of the reason for this is that oftentimes the reality that we're trying to change is other people, or it closely involves other people. For example, let's say we wanted a job that paid really high. Well, that might rely on other people hiring us or other people buying things from us, other people giving us money. It's difficult to change other people. It's difficult to get people to do things. Most of the realities that we want, that we expect, involve other people doing things differently. If all of our happiness is dependent upon our expectations of other people doing things differently, we might find ourselves being very upset very much of the time. Might I offer a fourth solution to all of this? Change your expectations and simultaneously seek to change your reality. That's the sweet spot. You hope for something, but you don't demand it. You don't need it. You don't expect it. You hope for it. You work for it. You strive for it. But regardless of the outcome, you are still going to be happy. This way, you can be happy while you pursue things, rather than miserable while you're pursuing things. This is a difficult state for a lot of people to accomplish because most people are motivated by their misery. They're motivated by how uncomfortable they are. They're motivated by the unmet expectations that cause them suffering. The suffering fuels them. You don't have to be this way. It's possible to be motivated by other things, higher things, better things that don't result in your suffering or your need for other people to change.